Miscarriages suck. They suck big time. There's absolutely no way around it. They are desperate, heart-wrenching, and lonely experiences. And if you are going through it right now or you have gone through it, you know this exactly. And there is one common thing that I see with a lot of women going through these, and that is the question, why? Why did this happen? Hello, my lovelies, and welcome to another one of my videos in which we'll be discussing a topic that just isn't fun. You know, most of my videos are all about, you can do this, go for this, try this, try that, beat the odds. The thing is, miscarrying is such a big part of the fertility journey for so many women. And I said in another video not too long ago that I intended to put out more content on this topic. So that's what we're doing today. I'm giving you an overview of the seven main issues that I come across. And of course, it won't be covering absolutely every potential cause, but I'm pretty sure that it will give you a good idea of where to start and what may be going on for you or where you might be at risk. So the number one thing that I come across is heavy metal toxicity. And this is because probably everybody is exposed to metals one way or another. And the heavy metal toxicity ties in with some of the other issues that could underlie miscarrying. And I will refer to that later on when I cover those issues. Uh, but this is kind of an umbrella issue because if there's heavy metal toxicity, it affects absolutely every process in your body. It, it affects the metabolism in your body. It affects your hormone balance. It affects your ability to hold on to nutrients or pick up on nutrients. It affects the quality of the DNA of sperm and eggs. So you see that if you're able to remove uh, this block, that it can really open up so much when it comes to your overall health and therefore also your fertility. So sometimes I may be doing a hair mineral test with people. Sometimes um, there are some obvious reasons for detoxing. For example, if they've been working with heavy metals or they've had uh, metal amalgam dental fillings, although this is less and less common these days. But even if people have been living in the city or using aluminum pots or eating fish, you know, what is too much heavy metals for one person? What is too much heavy metals for another? If you're struggling with conceiving, if you're miscarrying, then removing this block is absolutely a big one. I've got a dedicated video for this. The second reason that I come across a lot is poor quality, and that's poor quality of the eggs and of the sperm. And as I mentioned, it ties in with the heavy metals because if there's heavy metal toxicity, then it affects the DNA of sperm and eggs. And poor quality is something for women that you often see when they are a little bit older. The older we get, the more our eggs deteriorate. And often this is also what women hear when they go into a doctor's office and they don't see any obvious reasons for miscarrying, such as hormonal issues or genetic issues. If genetic testing has been done, then basically the standard answer is, oh, you know, poor egg quality. But I think it's kind of easy to say something like that because yes, of course, the quality of our eggs will deteriorate as we age. We are born with our eggs. <laughs> so they have been around for quite a while. But first of all, not all eggs come with you when you are born and are fully developed. They still have a chance of getting better because they are developed for several months before an egg is released. So in that period, you can still do a lot about the egg quality. And another thing is that we can't actually measure egg quality. It is often said that with AMH, that egg quality is tested, but that is not true. AMH tells us something about what the reserve is of our eggs, how much we have left. And the less we have left, the bigger chance that you know, there aren't a lot of good eggs left. So while yes, egg quality plays a role, it isn't, you know, the end of your fertility journey. There's a lot you can do about it. You need to make sure that you have all the right nutrients. You need to make sure that detox processes are in place, remove something like heavy metals. Those are the important things. I've got a couple of videos on egg quality, sperm quality and AMH as well, and trying to conceive when you're over 40. 
I think those videos could be really helpful if you're worried about egg quality. But you know what? Egg quality issues are not just when you're 35 plus. It can also be the case when you're younger. Just because we are so exposed to so many toxins, metals, drugs, our nutrition is not the best, especially in the West here. So there's more to the story, but it plays a role and it's important to look at. Not to mention, it's not just egg quality, it's also sperm quality. Even if the sperm test results are great, that doesn't mean that the quality is absolutely great. Even if the sperm looks healthy, motility is right, shape is right, there's still possibility that metal toxicity is affecting the sperm. So whenever a couple decides to detox metals, I really advise to both do it regardless of your test results because you want to lower the collective metal load, right? And even, for example, if it is about metal toxicity, if there is very little for each, together it might be just too much. The number three is something that you will come across a lot probably and that is genetic issues. Of course it is possible that your eggs and sperm have genetic issues and sometimes it is okay if only one of these two has it but a bigger problem if both have. There are lots of different genetic issues that can be at play. Um, if you've had multiple miscarriages, then chances are that you've had genetic testing and you will have the outcome of this. There is a, a simple genetic issue, relatively simple, which is the MTHFR gene mutation. And this is all about uh, the ability to detox in your body. So you can imagine if you have this issue and you have metal toxicity on top of it, then that really exacerbates the problem. If you have the MTHFR gene mutation, and there are a couple of uh, variants, that doesn't mean that you can't conceive and um, carry full term a healthy baby, but it may be a little bit more challenging. I do find though two really important things and the one is heavy metal detoxing has a big impact on these people and homeopathic heavy metal detoxing. And then the second one is making sure that you're definitely not taking folic acid, but methylfolate. And generally speaking, I advise this to everybody, even if they haven't been testing for MTHFR, but in case that is an issue for them, then I'm covering it. And secondly, methylfolate is just much easier for the body to take up and use than folic acid. Also, if there is a known sperm quality issue, then methylfolate is definitely the way to go. Fourthly is an issue with ectopic pregnancy. So if you've had an ectopic pregnancy before, then I would recommend that you check out my videos on ectopic pregnancies, because again, this is an entire different topic. In those videos, I cover what the underlying reasons for ectopic pregnancies could be and how you could address those issues and then reducing your chance of having another ectopic pregnancy. And I can tell you, I've had plenty of patients in my clinic that had an ectopic pregnancy in the past, may have even lost a tube in the process and then went on to have a happy, healthy baby. So it's absolutely possible. One ectopic pregnancy doesn't mean that you're doomed to have another one and lose your tubes. The fifth issue is something that you might have come across online as well, and that is low progesterone. And you will often find this issue when there are chemical pregnancies. So chemical pregnancies, I've told you before, I really dislike that term because it sounds like it wasn't a pregnancy at all. And that's not true. There was a pregnancy, there was an embryo, but unfortunately the body started the flow quite early. It can also be that there was a developmental issue when there was a chemical pregnancy, but very often it has something to do with low progesterone because in the second half of your cycle, from implantation onwards, you will need enough days for that embryo to implant properly to get the pregnancy hormones going to prevent you from having a flow. If you have a flow too early, then you are shedding your endometrial lining and along with it, unfortunately, the embryo. There is a lot of misconception when it comes to low progesterone. Very often you will hear that women or practitioners say that because there are multiple miscarriages, oh, it must be a progesterone issue or that practitioners are prescribing progesterone cream or pessaries as a, you know, precaution. But if there aren't any indications of low progesterone, that is absolutely pointless. It is more likely the case that progesterone is an issue, first of all, when you do have multiple chemical pregnancies, and secondly, that you know that you have a short luteal phase. And I did a video on this quite recently, so I'll make sure to link it in. 
because for you to know if you have a short luteal phase, you need to be charting. The miscarriage is where there is a missed miscarriage. Usually there's no progesterone issue. And if you think about it, it completely makes sense because if there's a progesterone issue, if it is too low or drops too fast, that means your body will start a flow. With a missed miscarriage, you will find out much later that the baby has already stopped developing. But despite the baby not further developing, your body still thinks it's pregnant. So apparently all the pregnancy hormones are in place for you to stay pregnant and not to have that flow. So when you have had missed miscarriages, it is quite unlikely for the issue to be a progesterone issue. If you have had missed miscarriages, usually I will find that it is indeed a quality issue because the baby didn't develop beyond a certain point. And there are actually a couple of crucial moments in the pregnancy, such as conception, of course, implantation, and then the next development towards a heartbeat and um, the forming of the neural tube. I should probably do a separate video on this at some point, but you can see that there are certain crucial moments that the embryo needs to be able to get through. And if um, they aren't able to do that because of developmental issues, then it is usually something to do with the quality that they started with in the first place and not a hormonal issue. And another reason for missed miscarriages, unfortunately, I find a lot are ultrasounds. So that is actually reason number six. And I'm not going to go into this too deeply. I know that a lot of you have found it really helpful to discover that ultrasounds aren't 100% safe, that they are used and that that is fine and helpful when it is medically indicated, but that it isn't something that you necessarily want to be doing routinely and that there are alternatives. If you want to learn more about this, you want to read about this, I've got a three-part article series on my website. It's about the research around this. It is about uh, your alternatives. If you want to not have an ultrasound your entire pregnancy or push it back. The sad thing is that the ultrasounds can also be underlying multiple miscarriages because if you have miscarried a first time, then you're kind of on record, right? You're on the radar. So the next time you fall pregnant, your practitioner might want to be extra careful and they decide to, to give you an early ultrasound. And the earlier your ultrasound is, the more the embryo is at risk. So then what I see happening sometimes, and it genu genuinely puts me to tears, is an ongoing dynamic of falling pregnant, early ultrasounds, miscarrying again, and so on and so on. Obviously, there is a relatively easy fix to the issue if it really is due to early ultrasounds, and that is these couples fall pregnant again, and then they don't have the ultrasound early or not at all, and then they suddenly have their rainbow babies. And that brings me to number seven, and that is trauma to the uterus. And this is something that I don't actually see online as underlying issue of miscarrying. Yes, you do read things like endometriosis or fibroids or polyps being an issue. And if that's the case, then what you need to be looking at is your progesterone and estrogen balance because polyps, cysts, and um, endometriosis are often related to estrogen dominance. And I've got a couple of videos on that as well. So definitely do check that out. But the same reason that these things can cause miscarriages is that trauma in general can cause um, miscarriages because if there has been trauma to the uterus there can be scarring and the scarring can affect the endometrial lining and the scarring can happen because of a DNC it can happen because of any kind of surgery even if it's just to check out if anything is wrong it could be due to a polyp or cyst removal it could also be to an abortion that has happened in the past and if um, there are scarring in the fallopian tubes and that could lead to an ectopic pregnancy. So on a very physical level, homeopathically, you can address the scarring. But I also find that when something has happened to your uterus that is so invasive, that cutting has happened and as a result there is scarring, there's also the emotional trauma and that doesn't necessarily happen just in your head or in your heart, but it's in your belly where you feel in your uterus that area just doesn't feel safe for a pregnancy. And uh, with homeopathy, the remedies that we prescribe, we prescribe them for you as a whole. So it would cover physical issues, mental, but also 
the potential emotional trauma and Arnica is the number one remedy for that. So I prescribe this a lot to my female patients that have gone through any type of surgery in that area in the past. And I've mentioned that in some other videos as well. So you can go and check those out if you like. I do find that the recommended potencies in those videos are very helpful and they're appropriate when you're self-prescribing. But often when I see my patients, I will have to go up in higher potencies to really get to the root of the trauma. So if you feel that the Arnica was helpful, but you're not quite there, then it's really worth uh, finding a homeopath that can look at this with you and prescribe you some higher potencies. So with all of this information, you may already have some ideas where to get started to reduce your chances of having a miscarriage in the future. But I've also got a follow-up video that is a bit more strategic and uh, maybe a bit more upbeat because it is all about attacking these risks that you may have and the things that you can do to improve your chances of conceiving and carrying full term that rainbow baby. If you aren't subscribed yet, this is the moment to hit that button and the notification bell so that you're alerted when that video goes up. And if that video is already live, it will be linked in the playlist that is on your screen right now. And in the meantime, take heart and see you in the next video. Bye, lovely.